Yo, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do this easy teleportation clone effect in After Effects. So let's just hop right into it. If you want to cut your editing time in half, make sure to check out my website where I sell a bunch of time-saving assets. So on this example on the screen, this is a music video I did a while ago. And the way I'm recreating this is just in my room, so this isn't the best footage. So it's really simple. You just set up a tripod, like I'm filming on a tripod with this camera right here right now. And I just went on the right side of my room and then over on the left side of my room and I just cut them together like that. And then it's really simple. We're just going to place in this asset right here which is this little like teleportation asset and we're going to use that to go from left to right so this is from a cinebax pack it's from the shockwave pack this is not like sponsored or anything i just think that they're good packs so if you guys are interested in that link down in the description and use my code and shit so i'm gonna just flip this resize this and i just dragged in this one this one is called burst 2 i'm thinking i can use this in a way to kind of make this look more natural. So I'm going to go ahead and set that blending mode to screen and then I'll just resize this to cover up that. So yeah, I'm going to just stretch it this way, maybe make it a bit thinner over here like that. And so now we got something that looks like this. Um, so I think I'm going to make this a bit faster. So I'm going to right click, go to time, time stretch and put this on something like 60, maybe 70. Yeah, so honestly, on this left side, it's looking pretty good. Um, obviously, on the right side, it does not look good. Um, it kind of looks like in just a really shitty overlay so far right now. Um, but we're going to have to like blend this in with our comp. So maybe what I'll do is I'll, I can just duplicate this one um, and then use this at the start. I'll just drag it over a bit, resize it, flip it, and then put it over this guy. And then maybe I can flip it this way to add some variation. And then I can add a bit of like a color change to it, uh, maybe bring down the saturation a bit. And so this is what we have so far. Um, so it's looking pretty cool. The only thing is that it just kind of pops up out of nowhere like that, as you can see, which looks like absolute dog water um but i do like how it's looking so far so i need to figure out a way to kind of fade it in from there so i'm thinking what i should do is i can duplicate that layer then right click on the first frame go to time freeze frame it and then drag it over to the left just slightly so this is my freeze frame right here it lasts for just a really small while i'm going to go ahead and pre-compose it with this one the one that's actually moving so to pre-compose, I'll just highlight those two layers together and do control shift C, move all attributes into the new composition and just click OK. Then I'll just have to change the blending mode to screen once more. And I'm going to add on Luma key. And on the first frame, I'll set the threshold until it disappears, kind of like that. Um, and then just increase the feather a bit and then kind of right here, maybe you can bring that back down to zero and it'll bring it back in to focus and then if you double click on this pre-composition it'll bring you into what you just pre-comped um, then you can maybe shorten this a bit you know and then to pull up your keyframes what you can do is click u on your keyboard u for used because you're using these keyframes i'm thinking what i'll have to do is just pre-comp this layer again and create a mask so on the first frame i'll kind of just create a little ball right there uh, bring up my mask tab by double tapping m on my keyboard and then I'll just increase the feather a bit and then click the mask path key keyframe. And then later, just kind of, you know, bring those over so it reveals the whole thing. Um, and then again, you're going to have to change the blending mode to screen. You can add some extra points in there, you know, like that. And then I'll change the blending mode to screen. So now I'm just going to go through and adjust these keyframes maybe add in a few um, and just make it look a bit more natural, you know, maybe make it a bit jaggedy, make, make some jagged edges, um, just, you know, make it not look like shit. And now I'm thinking we could just set some opacity keyframes. So on this first frame, bring it down to zero and then two frames later, bring it up to 100%. And then to make this feel a bit more natural, what we could do is add on an adjustment layer. So I'll right click down here, go to new, create adjustment layer. And then I'll just add on a bit of a flash. So I'll add on the exposure effect. 
click exposure and then increase that just a bit just a smidge and then i'll go over like two or three frames and bring that back down to zero now just for peace of mind i don't like looking at all these layers so i'm just gonna plop these into one layer by pre-composing them and then now i can add on like some zooms some shakes some color corrections so maybe add on a shake here where it looks like shit so i can right click down here go to new create an adjustment layer and then just add on a random shake. So I just added on a very slight shake right there and you can see that makes a huge difference. And it's almost like as I'm starting to teleport, I'm shaking the room with my superpowers. So then since I'm shaking over here when the teleportation starts on the other end, I can add it on this left guy over here. So right about there and then I have like two little shakes right there that kind of just show you know, going from left to right like that. And I think if you do that on beat with the music video, um, that could be really hard. Cool, so then I just added on some movement. So it's looking like this. So to get those kind of smooth little zoom outs like that, um, you're just gonna go ahead and set your keyframes however you like down here and then easy ease them with F9. Um, or you can right click, go to keyframe assistant and click easy ease. And then, so what that's going to do is allow you to open up your speed graph um, where you could do something like this. And if you don't see that, um, you might be on the value graph like that. Just come down here and do edit speed graph. So the last thing I'm going to do is add on this effect called uni heat wave. So I'll go down here, I'll create a new adjustment layer again and add on that heat wave effect. And so kind of like right at the climax of this explosion, I'm going to set a keyframe for heat intensity and just blast that all the way up. And then right before that, I'm gonna bring it back down to zero. And then as it kind of slows down and fizzes out, I'll bring that back down to zero. Now what you could do is you could actually mask out specific parts that you want that heat wave effect to happen on. Or, you know, you could be like me if you're lazy and just do it on the whole thing. Just slap that hoe on there. Just make sure to also fade out the blur amount as well. Because if you don't, you're just going to be left with some awkward like blur at the end like that, as you see. And it's a bit intense, so I'm just going to bring down the heat intensity to something like 60 or 70. And that's just going to create some realistic kind of, you know, ripples and whatnot in there. Um, as you can see, I'm moving the center of the warp and the heat wave, which I didn't know that you could do that until now. So that's fucking sick. But yeah, so now I'm just going to uh, create another adjustment layer and add on a bit of a color grade here. Now you could do this in Premiere Pro and just slap on a preset super easy using my LUT pack, but because I'm a freak, I'm just gonna do it real quick here in After Effects. So I'll just increase the contrast a bit, decrease the saturation, uh, decrease the shadows, increase the whites, increase the highlights a bit, play with the temp maybe a little bit, and yeah, you know, we got an interesting color grade on this hoe. And then finally, the last thing that I'd like to do is add on a bit of a flicker. So come down here, add on Sapphire Flicker. Kind of as it starts, I'll leave it at zero. So right about here. And then later, right about here is where you can kind of amp that up. So maybe like 0 0.7. And then as it fizzes out, you know, bring that hoe back down to zero. And yeah, that is exactly the kind of vibe that you're going for, especially if it's a music video. Flickr just really ties shit together, man. And so for some natural camera movement, I just added on a shake on a new adjustment layer and set the amplitude to 0 0.7 and the frequency at 1. That's just going to give a very, very slight camera shake. And then if you start to see the borders come up on the edges, just um, open up the Z distance and then increase it a little bit you actually decrease it for it to zoom in and that fixes your problem right there and so really you could do a little bit with this just you know use some overlays and it'll look fine or you could do all that stuff that i did add on just little small things to tweak it mess around with it and you know kind of put your own um stylistic flair on it But yeah, make sure to save time when you're editing. You don't want to be one of those guys that takes forever for your clients. So jmovfx.com, type it in um, and, and buy something. Cool. See you guys.